If a survey were to be taken among true crime enthusiasts on which case they would like to see solved, our bet would be that the majority would say the John Benet Ramsey case. In 2024, the enigmatic murder of John Benet Ramsey has an increased likelihood of being solved 27 years after the six year old child was discovered strangled to death in the basement of her family's Boulder, Colorado home, according to her father, John Ramsey. Join us as we look at the reactivation of the case, who's involved, the total ineptitude of the Boulder police, and what we can expect to learn with the authorities' renewed interest in the infamous cold case. Nearly three decades after the senseless murder of six-year-old John Benet Ramsey, a glimmer of hope has appeared as a devoted cold case team began re-examining key evidence that might ultimately reveal her killer's identity. The Colorado cold case team's renewed investigation into the long-standing mystery has sparked interest and hope, especially for John Benet's father, John Ramsey, who has long sought justice for his daughter and himself. In a recent interview with 60 Minutes Australia, John Ramsey says he's starting 2024 with more hope than ever before. I am more optimistic than I've been since the beginning, he said, following the completion of a year-long study by the Colorado Cold Case Review Team into his daughter's murder. In 2007, legislation was passed to establish the Colorado Bureau of Investigation's Cold Case Team, the Cold Case Task Force, and the Cold Case Database. In 2022, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation obtained funding to set up a full-time Cold Case Team. The Cold Case Team includes four agents, one analyst, one forensic investigative genetic genealogy analyst, and a supervisor. They also have two DNA and one latent print forensic scientist working with the team. A multi-agency team consisting of personnel from the Boulder Police Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, District Attorney's Office, Colorado Department of Public Safety, and Colorado Bureau of Investigation coordinated and worked extremely hard on the resumed attempts to solve the case, District Attorney Michael Doherty said. These agencies collaborated with private labs that specialize in different types of DNA analysis, according to Doherty. The Boulder Police Department's initial investigation received considerable backlash for focusing on John Bonet's parents, John and Patsy Ramsey, as primary suspects. They made up their mind on day one, and the conclusion was that I killed my daughter, John said in an interview. There's nothing more dangerous than a police department that made up its mind because they are totally excluding anything that conflicts with that conclusion, he noted in the 60 Minutes interview. When asked in November 2022 whether he believed the case would ever be solved, John Ramsey said, Not if it stays in the hands of the Boulder police. No, I don't. I really don't. How does Ramsey feel about his accusers being deeply embedded in the new investigation? While Ramsey has often feuded with Boulder police officers, he claims that things have changed dramatically in the investigation and at the BPD. The police department finally has competent leadership, has dealt with the problems in the detective division, and has included the FBI in discussions on how to proceed, Ramsey said. All I have asked is that they do all that is possible using the latest DNA sampling technology available in the private sector and then proceed based on the results, he added. The multi-agency team had its work cut out for it on the Ramsey case. According to the BPD, an intensive effort digitized all evidence to create a comprehensive and searchable database containing thousands of information files, bringing together more than 21,000 tips, over 1,000 interviews conducted across 17 states and two foreign countries, and samples from more than 200 different individuals, including handwriting, DNA, fingerprints, and shoe prints. The John Bonet case file is said to now consist of nearly 2,500 pieces of evidence and roughly 40,000 reports, with more than 1 million pages documenting the investigation, according to BPD officials. 
A fresh inventory of all collected evidence was made available for investigative review, which would not have been possible without the assistance of the FBI, they added. Although the team has kept their cards close to their chest, an investigator and forensic pathologist have some idea or opinion on what evidence is being looked at and shared their thoughts on the 60 Minutes episode. John San Agustin Within days of John Bonet's murder, police contacted Detective John San Agustin. Boulder police were ill-equipped to handle a case of this caliber and hoped the seasoned detective could point them in the right direction. The former detective said he was brought in to help with the Ramsey cold case investigation, but became frustrated within hours after reviewing the evidence and the BPD's unwillingness to listen to any theories that contradicted their own, namely that a family member was involved. There were at least 2,500 leads in the early part of the investigation that literally were never followed up on because tunnel vision existed from the moment the murder happened. The focus was on John and Patsy Ramsey, he explained. San Agustin showed 60 Minutes the back doorway leading to the Ramsey house and original crime scene images from that cold day in 1996. The photograph showed an open basement window with a suitcase beneath it. Fibers from the young beauty queen's clothes had been discovered in the case, a scarf mark on the wall which may have been from a shoe, and shards of glass lying on top of the case. According to San Agustin, the evidence suggested that an intruder was involved in the murder. Yeah, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes, right, to know that this is what we call a clue, right? You got an open window, you got a scuff mark on the wall, you have a suitcase, on the suitcase is some broken glass. It was first said that there were no traces of forced entry at the Ramsey family home, where John Bonet had gone missing before being discovered dead in the basement seven hours later. No tracks were found in the snow, but a boot imprint was discovered later. It was also discovered that a damaged window in the basement had been left open, which was first discounted as an access point, but an investigator later proved that a person could fit through it. According to San Agustin, all of this evidence was dismissed by the BPD, but was by no means the only evidence they dismissed and kept from the family. One of the most shocking pieces of evidence pointing away from John Bonet's parents was comprised of blood-stained underwear and fingernail clippings. On February 15, 1997, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation completed the initial DNA testing in the Ramsey case. This was the first DNA test conducted by law enforcement in this case, and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation said from the start that the DNA was mixed. This means that more than one source was discovered in the DNA sample. The written report presented to the Boulder Police Department said that the DNA profiles developed from bloodstains from panties as well as from right and left hand fingernails from John Bonet revealed a mixture from which the significant component matched John Bonet. If the minor components were contributed by a single individual, then John Andrew Ramsey, Melinda Ramsey, John B. Ramsey, Patricia Ramsey, Burke Ramsey, and Jeff Ramsey would be excluded as a source of the DNA analyzed on those exhibits. This DNA evidence, excluding the Ramseys, was completed just a little over two weeks after the murder, yet the authorities neglected to inform them of this crucial fact. It would take 11 long years for the Ramseys to get an apology for this injustice. July 9, 2008 Mr. John Ramsey, as you are aware, since December 2002, the Boulder District Attorney's Office has been the agency responsible for the investigation of the homicide of your daughter, John Bonet. I understand that the fact that we have not been able to identify the person who killed her is a great disappointment that is a continuing hardship for you and your family. However, significant new evidence has recently been discovered through the application of relatively new methods of DNA analysis. This new scientific evidence convinces us that it is appropriate, given the circumstances of this case, 
to state that we do not consider your immediate family, including you, your wife Patsy and your son Burke, to be under any suspicion in the commission of this crime. I wish we could have done so before Mrs. Ramsey died. To the extent that we may have contributed in any way to the public perception that you might have been involved in this crime, I am deeply sorry. No innocent person should have to endure such an extensive trial in the court of public opinion, especially when public officials have not had sufficient evidence to initiate a trial in a court of law. I have the greatest respect for the way you and your family have handled this adversity. Another expert featured on the show has also aired his misgivings about how the BPD handled the case and mishandled the vital evidence he supplied them with. Dr. Michael Doberson Alex Hunter, the Boulder District Attorney, decided to get help in solving the crime after continually hitting his head against the wall with the BPD. He turned to Lou Smith, a seasoned Colorado Springs homicide detective who had recently resigned from the force. Smith was known as a no-nonsense evidence man, a tenacious detective who often solved complex crimes after others had given up. Smith's assignment was to investigate the police's assumption that one or both of John Bonet's parents, John and Patsy, were involved in the murder. As Smith examined the evidence, he became confident that someone had broken into the home and killed John Bonet while her family was sleeping. Smith resigned in protest in September 1998 after the BPD kept him in the dark as they kept up the parent did it narrative. Smith declined publicly discussing the facts that led to his intruder theory. There's a vicious killer out there, he went on to say, and nobody is looking for him. When Smith initially started investigating the murder, the primary BPD belief was that one of the parents had bludgeoned their daughter in a fit of rage, possibly because she had wet the bed, and that one or both of them covered up the crime by staging a murder and drafting a fake ransom letter. At one stage, Smith believed the parents were the probable culprits. But as he examined the evidence, including police crime scene images and video, he started to question his initial assumption. Smith learned that a basement window was open, and the window well outside revealed evidence of a recent disturbance. However, the police unexpectedly denied an officer's request to send police dogs to find a probable scent trail. Smith discovered leaves and trash, including foam packing peanuts, outside the home in the window well. He discovered identical leaves and foam peanuts inside the basement, including one 60 feet away in the room where John Bonet was found, possibly indicating that an intruder inadvertently transported the material into the basement after entering through the window. The wind sure didn't blow those in there, Smith said. Smith noticed a fresh print on a high-tech sneaker, a brand that no one in the family owned. Smith examined autopsy images and saw strange abrasions on John Bonet's back and face. Smith questioned whether they were caused by a stun gun, an unusual weapon for a parent to use on their child. Smith measured the markings and determined they matched a stun gun called the Air Taser. He began to believe that the perpetrator may have used a stun gun on John Bonet when she was sleeping and then took her to the basement. The Boulder police disputed Smith's stun gun explanation. They sent some of the autopsy photos to Arapahoe County Coroner Dr. Michael Doberson, who had studied stun gun injuries on pigs just three months before the murder, to discount Smith's theory. According to the BPD, Doberson said that he did not believe that the marks were caused by a stun gun, as Smith indicated. However, he denied saying that. Doberson has claimed that he was misquoted. That was something of a misstatement, since my real conclusion was that I couldn't, at that time, say whether this was a stun gun injury or not, because we had to have a weapon to compare it to. Doberson said he requested further information, including more images and a stun gun matching the markings. However, Doberson never heard from the BPD again. It was Smith who brought him the taser and the close-up photos of the injuries. 
When Dobison clarified what he actually said, acquired the additional information he requested, and concluded that the experiment reveals precisely the same marks and cell changes that were seen on John Bonet, the Boulder police, who initially approached him as the expert on stun guns, ignored his expert opinion. If you are shocked by the ineffective and blinkers-on approach of the BPD concerning the evidence put forward to them for a possible intruder killing John Bonet, their bungling police work would become more evident just nine months after the gruesome crime. Nine months after John Bonet's unresolved death, a young girl from the same Boulder, Colorado dancing school as the murdered beauty queen was assaulted in her bed by a masked intruder. The girl, known by the alias Amy, woke up in the early hours of September 14, 1997, to discover a man dressed in all black standing at her bedside with his hand over her mouth. The perpetrator used Amy's first name and threatened to knock her out if she yelled. Amy was physically and sexually assaulted by the unknown perpetrator over a few terrifying minutes. Amy's family thinks the man meant to kidnap her. However, the planned kidnapping was thwarted when the girl's mother came into the room holding a can of mace, having awakened to the sound of whispering voices down the hall. Amy's family members compared the intruder to a ninja who escaped the house by jumping out of a second-floor window and disappearing into the night. In an interview, Amy's father said that he thinks the assailant had been watching the family for some time before the incident occurred, most likely targeting his daughter at her dancing school, Dance West, before striking at an opportune time. Police documents acquired by a major news site showed that detectives were alerted to a possible hiding place where Amy's assailant may have been while watching the victim and her family. Two months after the assault, the family's immediate neighbor informed authorities that they had discovered proof that someone was living in a seldom-used flat above their garage. According to the records, the illegal resident left behind various items and rubbish, including empty beer cans, which were taken by BPD detectives. It is unknown if the objects were ever tested for DNA, and the Boulder Police Department refused to respond when asked. Amy's father told the authorities that whoever had been living above his neighbor's garage was most likely responsible for sexually abusing his daughter. Amy's father also asked authorities to look into the possibility that the assault on his daughter was related to the death of John Bonet, who was discovered murdered less than two miles away barely nine months earlier. In addition to attending the same dancing school, both girls took part in several public events in the months before their victimization. However, Amy's father said that Boulder police were dismissive and disinterested in exploring any apparent similarities between the two crimes, and that they were even hostile to him for making the suggestion. John Bonet's father, like Amy's father, believes that his family was being watched in the months leading up to the murder. Ramsey described the parallels between the two crimes as unbelievable. More shocking, he added, was that Boulder investigators ignored Amy's father's request to examine the cases together. It could very well be the same guy, John said. I really thought this was related. There's a similar mode of operation, and it needs to be considered a possible link. But it's shocking, absolutely shocking, that Boulder police didn't investigate the link. They absolutely should have. Amy's father accused the BPD of mishandling the investigation into his daughter's assault by neglecting to properly secure evidence, ignoring promising leads, and overall being uninterested and unhelpful. He has often called the case investigators incompetent and arrogant. His statements have mirrored John Ramsey's description of BPD investigators. According to Amy's case documents, two of the investigators who investigated John Bonet's murder also looked into Amy's attack. The investigators were Linda Arndt and Thomas Trujillo. Arndt, who had been the sole law enforcement officer on the scene when John Bonet's body was discovered, was removed from the Ramsey case in 1997 after receiving harsh criticism and ridicule for how she handled the investigation and failed to safeguard the crime scene. After taking a prolonged medical vacation, 
For physical exhaustion and strain, Aunt was assigned to Amy's case on September 17th, three days after the assault. According to the investigation, Amy's parents informed Aunt that they both felt the assault was tied to John Bonet's case. Aunt also interviewed several of Amy's acquaintances, which enraged her father since it essentially exposed her as a victim of sexual assault to her peers, something the family had hoped to keep hidden. Trujillo was recently removed as chief of the BPD's investigation section and transferred to night patrol after an internal evaluation showed that several unnamed incidents were not adequately handled between 2019 and 2022. It's like a second bank robbery in a small town. You've got to look and see if there's a connection, Ramsey would say, and in my mind, there was a huge connection, both in terms of how it was accomplished the fact they were both children, and that my daughter and Amy both went to the same dance school. But they didn't. It's insane. Not everyone is as excited as John Ramsey about the new news. Many online commentators feel that it just feels like a case of deja vu. One Redditor posted, Here we go again, a one-sided John Ramsey storyline. Told, of course, by John Ramsey using a female talking head. There is no new evidence that will solve this crime. My only question is, where was John Ramsey all those years John Bonet has been in a cold grave? Not looking for her killer like he is now at 80. Another added, there was no new evidence. What can we expect from the Colorado Cold Case Review Team? Nothing. The Colorado Cold Case Review Team has spent the last year reviewing the John Bonet Ramsey homicide investigation to generate investigative recommendations, which the Boulder Police Department and the Boulder District Attorney are getting ready to act on. According to a case update published nearly 27 years to the day of Ramsey's murder, and more than a year since the Boulder Police Department's last statement. The tragic case is still in the hands of the department that bungled it in the first place.